Tom right. gave us a little bit of background on yeah. your career and what you've done. Yeah. The head of Kadima party is a woman. Yes. Does the introduction of gender in the leadership of Israeli politics contribute to advancing a solution? The, with the Palestinians? You mean, okay. In, in uh, all that is okay. the Israeli experience. Um, the totality. Yeah. Yeah, make it easier. <laughs> There's a big question. In general, it's not just in Israel whether the introduction of women into politics changes politics, but, changes but thinking. You're, yes. You're, you're working with religions here, they're very. Patriarchal. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, certainly. Yeah. Um, I'm personally, of course, both for self-interest and ideologically, very committed to having greater advancement of women in politics. I think it's right, just as morally, uh, and I think it's also good, in the sense that uh, if you look at countries where you have a high representation of women in parliament, they tend to be better countries uh, in terms of their human development index, their social welfare. Now, of course, there's a question of chicken and egg. Is our countries that have better social welfare, education, so forth, are countries that make it easier for women to advance, or because there's greater representation of women in politics, they take care of these issues. But on the whole, you do, you do see some correlation. Israel, in this respect, is not in a good spot. Uh, even though this parliament, this Knesset, has the highest ratio of women ever, it's still relatively low. I think we're talking about 22, something like that, out of 120. Better, what? And, OK, so what I was about to say is that it's not good, but not yet embarrassing, because other countries, such as the US and France, are in a similar position, like countries that, let's say, we'd like to compare ourselves to. So it's not good, but not yet embarrassing to the point that uh, people feel that a major change is needed. And you've had a woman prime minister. And we've had a woman prime minister. And it's also a unique instance because Israel, at least until the 90s, was one, I think, of three countries in which there was a woman prime minister who was not the daughter of, the widow of, the wife of uh, someone else. And that was only Margaret Thatcher, Golda Meir, and I think one more. I don't remember. Um, so I think it's right and I think it's good. Whether it will affect the conflict, I can't say. I mean, uh, you certainly see women across the political map. The fact that you're a woman by no means guarantees that you'll be on the left, on the right, that you will be more empathetic to the suffering of the Palestinians or not. Uh, so. In that respect, there's no indication that the entry of more women into Israeli politics might uh, change the parameters of the conflict. What about introduction of women into Arab politics? Let me put it this way. Introduction of women into Arab politics will, I think, will bring the conflict closer to solution, but not because they're women, because that would indicate that Arab society is going through a much broader change of becoming more democratic, more liberal, more open. Um, I, think, I think one of the reasons also that make this conflict a little harsher is that from the Israeli perspective, there's no, call it, desire to to assimilate into this region because we see nothing in this region that we would like or respect. Uh, there's no liberal democracies. As a woman, I see nothing that I should like uh, in the countries around us. So if you were to see more women in Arab politics, and that indicated a much larger change in the Arab world towards a more democratic, liberal, open, uh, maybe even secular society, then yes, I do think that would make this conflict much, much more likely.